Allow me now to turn to our reading for today. And our reading for today is a 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. And I will read the entire chapter. And I read, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even our gospel is veiled. It is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ, Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who, is, who said, Light, let light shine out of darkness. Made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Verse 18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And that is the word of God. And we say, thanks be to God. Allow me to invite our Reverend Irene, who is going to bring God's word to us today. Let's appreciate her as she comes, wherever you are, let's appreciate her. Father, we thank you for your servant, and Lord, we pray for your anointing to be upon her. We pray, Lord, that you use her, but Lord, we also pray that you prepare our hearts so that we receive that which you have in store for us. For this we ask, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Karibu sana mchungaji. May the Lord bless you as you bring God's word to us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Reverend Majid. Uh, and it's a privilege to be here today and to bring the word of God to us. I want to invite you back at home to kindly put a finger on your Bible because we are going to just search the scriptures together. 
as we address the topic of today's sermon, which is uh, never give up. Uh, what a timely sermon uh, to speak at a time like this when we are going through a very difficult season in our nation. And over this child, you can imagine how devastating that would be if it happens to any parent. To see your child away from you and you cannot do anything. You can imagine how it was for the father of the prodigal son when he had to lose the son and yet having this close-knit family. You can imagine the emotional turmoil that rejection brings. The emotional turmoil that comes when you lose a business that you've invested so much of what you have into it. You can imagine how it is when you face betrayal, when you face loss or sickness or situations that you, you personally understand. That thing that pains you the most and you've taken the most of you to invest everything that you had, the feelings, the emotion and all that. And Corinth was like a baby to Paul. And it had come to a situation where it was going through this phase in life and Paul had to write a letter to address the crisis that were happening uh, in Corinth. And so crisis in whatever form or shape have a way of just pushing us to be in a point where we just want to give up. And it is a natural default, a natural re reaction for every human being that sometimes when you are pushed, hardly pressed on a wall, you almost feel like you want to throw in the towels. You almost feel like, you know, this is it. And we have, you could be having a brother or a sister or somebody who has gone into depression because of this. Some even have committed suicide because they can't handle it. It is hard. Some are even sick because at that point of depression, you cannot take care of yourself. And there are so many other several outcomes. A void that is left because of that. And I want us to look, as we look at the scriptures today, to just look at three things that will help us to interact with the word of God. And number one, I hope you have a pen and you are writing this down. Uh, number one, it is the value of the vessel. And then number two, it is the vindicated victim. The vindicated victim. And number three, the victorious Christ. The value of the vessel, the vindicated victim, and the, val uh, the victorious Christ. Many of us are familiar with the story of the Titanic ship. It had great value for those who spoke of it. And there was pride into it that it was one of those ships that can never uh, sink. And many people went into it because they wanted to have this amazing cruise over uh, the oceans as they enjoyed this new creation. And as we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 6 to 7, we are looking at a vessel. The value of a vessel, a jar that Paul describes it as a jar of clay. David grieves in 2 Psalm 125 and says, and this is when Saul and Jonathan had died in a battle, he says, how the mighty have fallen. The reality that this scripture brings to us today is that we are just of clay. No matter, no matter how mighty we might seem, no matter how of value we might look, no matter how wealthy or how we, poised we could be, or the kind of a person that you think you are, the reality that Paul brings to us today is that we are just but a jar of clay. And this statement is metaphoric. It is very symbolic. And it shows that we as human beings are very weak. We are ordinary. We are breakable. Jazz. There is a need to come to this reality. That we might seem okay. And we might seem to have gotten everything together. But there is a time where our weakest button is pressed by a situation. And we are down there. 
and we feel like giving up. And we feel like throwing in the towels. And the church in Corinth has gone, had gone through a season like that where they threw in the towel on the teachings that they had been taught. They gave up on the apostle who had raised them up. They gave up on the doctrines that they had held and had made them to be the child that was there. And they began to listen to a different voice that was giving them a different message, a message that was misleading them. They allowed ungodly influences over their lives. And that is the natural reality of the flesh. We are weak and always being pushed into doing things that we do not, uh, things that are not right. We are pushed into circumstances where we begin to justify sin. We are pushed into places where we begin to oppose authority. Right now, as a nation, we are going through a caveat and we are told, no, do not go beyond this territory. Stay in within this region. But we know because of our human nature, we are pushed to go and look for ways to sneak out of the, of the, of the county. Naturally, the flesh draws us into doing things that are not right. We are just but a clay, a jar of clay. And because of our weaknesses, another group has a different way of trying to feed into their weaknesses. And so they are in pursuit of power. They are in pursuit of wealth. They are in pursuit of position to try and hide their weaknesses. But we cannot escape the reality that Paul brings out very clearly that we are just but jars of, of clay. But the second reality that Paul's bring out on that uh, chapter from 6 to 7 is that there is the reality of the value to this weak vessel of clay. That, it, that is when we allow light to shine into us. When we allow, verse 6 says, let light shine out of darkness. Made his light shine in, in our hearts to give us the light to the knowledge of the glory displayed in the face of Christ. When we become, when we realize that light that Jesus has given us, then there is a transformation. There is a value that is given to this jar of clay. And we, as the scripture described, become, we begin to bear a treasure within us, as Paul says in verse 7. When we allow Jesus in us, Jesus come with the treasure of the gospel, the treasure of the grace that we enjoy when we encounter him, and we carry that from within us. He comes with a surpassing power, and that we find in verse 8, the surpassing, uh, uh, surpassing power that can only come from God and not from us. Our lives begin to have a meaning. Our lives begin to see the value in the who we are. We begin to feel satisfaction after encountering Christ. The value in our suffering, the value in the things we have, the value in the power, the position, the wealth, everything begins to gain meaning and value. And that only happens when we begin to realize that we need a higher being. We need Jesus to transform our hearts and to transform our lives. And what does that mean? Once we have Jesus in us, Paul talks about the surpassing power that now in everything that we do, we draw you forgiven and the Lord saves you. And if that is where we are as a nation, I pray that may we come to a point where we will repent and allow the Lord to minister to our hearts. But it is not all suffering that are as a result of sin. Even for Christ, he was crucified on the cross. The most painful and disgraceful capital punishment, together with the thieves, and was put in a very shameful position. A position that one cannot dread to be in. What is your shame? What is that shameful thing that you dread? What is your form of suffering? 
And Paul lays down a list of suffering that we as Christians go through. And number one, he says we are hard-pressed. We are troubled. He says we, we doubt. Or if you want, you can say we are perplexed. We say we face persecution. We are struck down. We face death every day. These are the things that we go through as believers. We go through, actually we go through, everyone go through, go through these things, whether you are born again or not born again. The only difference is that for you who have, have Christ in you, is that when you are hard pressed, you are not crushed. Praise be to God. When you are doubting or perplexed, you do not despair. When you are persecuted, you don't feel abandoned because you have Jesus with you. When you are struck down, you are not destroyed. And for Paul, he needed to look at this and the reality of what he was going through. The situation and the circumstances that he was facing. And as a believer, as someone who knew the Lord, as a missionary who was well immersed in the word of God, there was, there was a time when he was hard pressed. There was a time when he was going through situation. But I want to ask us, what is our attitude to suffering? Christ knew what was coming his way, but he never gave up on us. He never gave up on us or on the world. Job challenges me when he says, after receiving all this news of the loss, he grieves and he worships God. For Jesus, he calls on the Father and he says, take this cup away from me. How can I worship the Lord at a point of my suffering? How can I still fix my eyes on Jesus? How can we still hold on to him? What is your attitude through, uh, when you're going through a situation? You need to always remember that if you have Christ in you, you have been vindicated. You have been saved from the accusation. The last thing I want us to look at is the victorious Christ. And that is 4, 13 to 18. And one musician taught uh, Danley, sang a song and says victory belongs to Jesus. And verse 13 gives me the temptation to ask you, do you believe? Because it says, it is written, I believe therefore I have spoken. Since we have the same spirit of faith, so we believe and therefore speak. Do you believe? Do you believe in the resurrected Christ? Do you believe that he's in you, he is in you? That he has given you purpose and a meaning? Do you believe that he is with you even through your suffering? Through every situation that you are in, even at the most weakest time of your life? Can you speak of him? Can, we, can you speak about him to someone else? And in verse 14, Paul says, I'm able to do this. I'm able to, I'm able to speak of him because... I have seen Christ being raised from the dead. I have seen that power that raised Christ from the dead. And verse 15, Paul talks to the church in, Cor in Corinthian, the, the church in Corinth, and he tells them that the suffering that I have suffered is for your own benefit, that I am calling unto you and unto us to consider, consider the benefits of our suffering. What good can come out of this suffering? And so Paul highlights that the grace born out of this suffering is causing an overflow of thanksgiving. An overflow of thanksgiving for the glory and honor of God. And Paul draws two causes and effects. He says, we are outward, we outwardly wasting away, but inwardly renewed. Our trouble are alight and momentary, outweighing, but outweighed by eternal glory. Then he pleads with the church in Corinth and tells them in verse 18 that let's fix our eyes on Jesus. And I want to plead with you today that if you are the victorious Christ in you, let's fix our eyes on Jesus. Let us fix our eyes on the cross because he who saved you is in you. And he is ready to sustain you through your situation. He is ready to walk with you, with you through the fire. He is ready to run the race with you. Despite all, you do not need to lose heart. Therefore, as we are going through a tough time as a nation and globally, I'll, I know beyond this, you have your own underlying issues 
that you are battling with. For those who are not born again, allow me to invite you that you may see the light of Christ shine in your darkness. Allow me to call on you to make a decision to allow Jesus into your life. That he may bring value to you. That you may find meaning and purpose and see the value in you as a vessel so that you may not lose hope. Never to give up. And for those who are born again, my prayer is that you may allow the power of the Lord to be in you. To give you the strength not to give up. And that you may be the source of encouragement not only to yourself but to others. We should never give up or lose heart. For we are valued vessels. For we are vindicated victims who bear in the victoria, who bear in us the victorious Christ. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We want to bless you, O oh Lord. As you tell us in your word, we are hard pressed on every side but not crushed, perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. And that is only possible because victory belongs to you. So Lord, we choose to fix our eyes not on what is seen but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And so, Lord, we continue just to ask that, yes, you came. You came that, yes, we may be weak vessels. You can vindicate us. But, Lord, you can also give us the victory. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for giving someone a victory today. Thank you for someone, if you are there and perhaps you confessed him as your Lord and Savior. We bless the name of the Lord. And the Lord is hearing our prayers. All over the world, the Lord is listening, is allowing people to listen to his word and his message. For this, Lord, we ask, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. And we all said, we all said, amen. Just in case you are watching and uh, you made that confession to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please get in touch with us. We've sent the number. It's a number for either a SMS, a text message, or WhatsApp, or even on our Facebook. Please get in touch with us so that we can see how we can walk this journey of faith together. Before we finish, so wherever you are, let me just ask you to stand to your feet. Then we make a prayer of benediction and we trust that the Lord will take us through this week. Father, we want to bless you. We want to thank you. We thank you that, uh, yes, we pray together and we bless each and every one of us. And Lord, that you continue to watch over us. And so wonderful people of God, even this week, I pray that the Lord bless you, that the Lord keep you, that the Lord make his face to shine upon you, and that the Lord be gracious to you. This season, my prayer for you is that the Lord will protect you in a very, very, very special way. That you and your loved ones, the Lord will protect you from COVID-19. For those of us that have to travel, I pray that the Lord will have his angels cover you. Everything that you will do this week, I pray that you will see the favor and the blessings of the Lord. Those of us that are in businesses, how my prayer for you is that your business will continue to prosper in a miraculous way. That your businesses will not close down. Those of us that are employed, I pray that the Lord will continue to sustain you in your workplaces. Those of us who are working in hospitals and relatives that are working in hospitals, how I pray that the protection of you will be with you and your loved ones. This is my prayer for you and over you. In the name of God, who is the Father and who is the Son 
and who is the Holy Spirit. And we all said, I said we all said, Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen, amen, amen. See you next Sunday. Please invite someone, share the good news, for we have a rare opportunity to share the good news with our loved ones, our colleagues, and our family members. The Lord bless you. Thank you very much.